Male fragility is a problem. That's why we're reviewing 2017's greatest moments in male fragility so far. AIDS is a problem. That's why we're reviewing 2017's greatest moments in AIDS so far. Pedophile rings are a problem. That's why we're reviewing 2017's greatest moments in kid fucking so far. Vehicular terrorism is a problem. That's what, do you see how it's kind of fucked up? It, to say X is a problem, now let's revel in how great X is. It gives the impression that it's not a problem that you see should be solved. You see it as a problem to be kept around and celebrated because you find it so amusing. And because we've already covered the fragility of these guys, and of course, this guy, we're gonna go over the moments you might have missed. Can you imagine if a man presented a feature going, Aren't women fragile? <laughs> what is the deal with women being so fragile? <laughs> Am I right? You give them one little false allegation and they go off and kill themselves like an hero. You've already seen me calling Hillary Clinton a feminazi and well, female fragility strikes again. She didn't like that very much. We just made it illegal for women to talk to or say no to a man without his permission. Now let's watch them whine about nothing, eh? Meet Julie. She had her kids taken away by the state and now she's doing that typical woman thing where she gets overly emotional. Meet the heroes who sawed off their wife's genitals when they asked for a divorce. Laugh, laugh, laugh. There's no such thing as that, is there? There's no, there's no show where men sit around on a table and say shit like that. That's what people think MRAs do. <laughs> Only in the imaginary basements of straw men's rights advocates would that kind of brazen shit healery he actually go on. You see, the Justice for Men and Boys Party has had a regular feature called Lying Feminist of the Week. And those five words are enough to get entire football stadiums to retreat to their fainting couches. Oh, how ghastly! You can't possibly say that! Guards! Guards! Seize these woman-hating wretches! But this dead-eyed bint comes out and presents the three best easily harmed males of the year. <laughs> Check it out, you prick men, they bleed! Isn't that awesome? Prick, prick, prick! Oh, there's blood everywhere! This, no, no sexism here. Nothing, nothing willfully nasty or discriminatory here. This is funny. Men are fragile, lol. Drink their tears and kill them all. These are just memes, you see, and it's funny. Our memes are funny and your memes are not. Our memes are funny and your memes are not. Our memes are funny and your memes are not. And I would never make a purely emotional argument. Only those other people make emotional arguments. Those other people whose memes are not fun, fun, good, good like mine. If you haven't noticed, I've I, I've purged my conscience, conscience recently. Purged it of the insidious idea that this is funny, but that isn't is anything resembling a logical argument. Funny is defined entirely by the subjective experience and the emotional state of the observer. This is funny, but that isn't. That's your feels. That's all it is. It says nothing about anything, and it says nothing about you except what your tribe is and how irrational your worldview is. Saying this is funny, but that isn't is no different from saying this makes me feel good and that doesn't, therefore reality. It's the exact traceable moment at which postmodernism breaks open the cocoon and emerges as totalitarianism. Woke hipsters do with humour what virtue signalers do with well, virtue. <laughs> they abuse it. They use it as their excuse for everything until it becomes meaningless. They shove it up their ass and clamp down on it until it's broken into irretrievable pieces and no one can use it anymore. They're just as bad as anyone. Overly emotional, oblivious children who cannot own their shit because they are willfully lost in a capricious postmodern world of fluff where they're never wrong. You, you can claim that someone is never wrong. You can hang that accolade around the neck of your favourite woke hipster and tell yourself as long as you're loyal to them, you'll never be wrong either. You are free to pedestalise yourself and your tribe and your infallible chief, but you will not be doing them any favours unless you consider infantilization a favour. You wouldn't want to reduce someone to the point at which they consider drinking games to be a harmful form of language policing. That really would... Be hilariously fragile. 
fragility at the box office, in the workforce, and yes, over one's hypothetical murder. I've only got three pieces of clip art to go on here, and uh, along with what you've said, but at first glance, it looks like you're covering the unlawful discrimination of male customers, the unlawful dismissal of an employee on grounds of wrong think, and what's number three, a death threat? Hypothetical murder. I'm, I mean, I'm crap at cryptic crossword clues, <laughs> but I'm really good at tongue twisters. But riddle me this. Would, would you be considered hilariously fragile if you objected to me sending you a tweet describing your hypothetical death? Like, I hope you die in a fire? Or today you died in a fire? <laughs> it took you ages to burn. For, for hours you were nothing but a sizzling, bubbling mass of borborygmus. <laughs> which came as something of a disappointment because it was a cold day and I was looking forward to a roaring fire on which to toast my high-definition ramen. They've got 280 characters over there. <laughs> it's, uh, oh, it goes deep. It does not. I'm on gab.ai now, by the way. Do our random account. See you there. Before we go on, let's just clarify that we at Newsbroke love men. Matt is a man. Our camera guy Hugo is a man. Our content strategist is, of course, a man. I can't be racist. Some of my best friends are black. Is that a racist thing to say? But I'm, I'm still not entirely convinced it is. I mean, friendships are chosen and minorities are rare, so to mutually befriend a minority is at least a small amount of evidence that you're not racist. It's a bit of an empty gesture, but not as empty as... I don't hate men. Some of my family members are men. You ever come out with that one, Francesca? Because I've heard it many times. Do you know, if, if the best thing I can say about women is... Well, my mother was one. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't exactly call it misogyny, but it'd be pretty clear that I'm not really trying. My cat is a... no, well, my cat's a lady. Thank God. What? Processing joke. Searching... oh! I, I think she was actually complaining there that production crews are mostly men. It's all a joke, folks, so there is no reason for outrage, but the joke, to translate it to racism again, is... I don't hate niggers. Look, my bodyguard is a nigger. My chauffeur is a nigger. My cotton picker is a nigger. Even my wife is a nigger. Oh, wait, no, she's not. Phew, I'm glad someone around here isn't a nigger. <laughs> see, see, the joke is, I'm not racist. But I'm totally racist, guys. <laughs> I'm racist as shit and I'm loving it. These people are my servant class and I get to resent them for it. It's brilliant, you guys. And while patriarchy might concretely hurt women in the form of sexual assault, Concretely. It's unequal pay. Concretely. And a wasted afternoon watching makeup tutorials. <laughs> Concretely. See, I can't, I can't tell, I can't tell where the line is between the propaganda and the humor. That last one sounds like an obvious joke. Like, damn, this patriarchy forcing me to put this lipstick on. Grr. It must be the invisible grip of the patriarchy, forcing my hand towards my face and making me apply this mascara. A pox on you, omnipresent patriarchal sorcerer. I wish women were in charge. They don't give a shit about each other's looks. But see, the other two things you said also sounded like jokes. Damn this patriarchy making men work harder than me. Damn this patriarchy making men the only ones guilty of rape. Rah! <laughs> So I'm not sure if you're joking all the way down to the first one, or if you're serious all the way up to... It's the patriarchy's fault that there are so many makeup tutorials around here. It's the patriarchy's fault that YouTube is deliberately marginalizing and disincentivizing anything remotely skeptical of anything else. <laughs> I'm sure this is funny to someone. <laughs> I'm sure someone out there knows exactly when to take this seriously and when not to. So as to unlock the combination and make the, this, this premise consistent enough to be funny. I'm sure your only on audience knows what to do here, but I guess that ain't me. Talking about patriarchy can hurt male feelings. Is that why you do it? Like all the fucking time. For real, is that the reason you keep bludgeoning everyone with the same meaningless overused buzzword over and over again? and then fantasizing about the negative emotions you've created. Is that what this is all about? You like the idea that you've hurt someone's feelings. <laughs> Just the idea. You'll invent it if you need to. And it's okay when you do it, because these memes are funny, and those memes are not. It's called male fragility. 
And it's impossible for anyone to hurt your feelings, right? I mean, you're hard as nails. You don't get hurt feelings. You just get harassed and depressed into silence by the evil language police. I mean, patriarchy. I mean, autism. I mean, male fragility. God, it's so confusing. <laughs> it's not the same, said one side. Our, our side has good intentions and their side has bad intentions. Exactly the same thing, said the other side. Look, okay, fine. Some of these memes are funny and some of them are not. Which, whatever, we'll go with that. Screw objectivity, screw the enlightenment. Screw it, like so many light bulb jokes before it. After it even. We'll do it the old fashioned way. Choose your opinion, choose your emotions, choose your buzzwords, then divide up. Call your opinions the truth, call your emotions the correct definition of funny, and call your buzzwords just memes, bro. That's how we do things around here. Set your sense of humour in stone and do not deviate. But one thing we could all certainly agree on is matriarchy is not a meme, and cluster B disorder is certainly not a meme. It's not even a thing. They're, they're at best inappropriate and at worst non-existent. Cluster B matriarchy. Why, I've never heard such weak memes. I mean, sexist, ableist bigotry. Only an emotional retard would find anything funny or true about the concepts of principally female power or principally female disorders. You're some kind of freak, sir. You have two choices here. You can join team man bad, woman weak and I care. Or you can join Team Mad Bad, Man Bad Women Week, and I don't care. And then together we can all feel superior to the limping shambles of space lepers known as Team. Men aren't necessarily bad and women aren't necessarily weak, and it doesn't matter how much I care. Because those guys are all patriarchal artists to a man, am I right? High five! In the meantime, folks, breaking character within character within character in the meantime i'm gonna put a word up on the screen a word that makes woke hipsters and virtue signalers give exactly the same reaction something like god why are you always talking about that it's so lame always going on about that thing i don't have emotions you do defensiveness at the discussion of sexism and the inability to accept or take some responsibility for inequalities between men and women by acting like and i don't use this word often a whiny Why are you always bringing up a thing that's relevant when you could be bringing up a thing that has fuck all to do with anything? This isn't about relevance or what's actually real. It's about what I think is funny. God, why is everyone so emotional except me? In a world where multi-million dollar superhero movies never have female protagonists. <sighs> Suicide Squad, Catwoman, Supergirl, <laughs> Buffy the Vampire Slayer. That X-Men spin-off, that other X-Men spin-off, that other X-Men spin-off. Fucking Elektra, fucking Hawk Girl. <laughs> These movies don't exist, Francesca. They're just not very successful. Where girlfriends nationwide sit through yet another Transformers sequel, one theater chain dared to show screenings of Wonder Woman for women only. And people got angry. They broke the fucking law, you daft boot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we broke the law, and people got angry with us for breaking the fucking war. That is not the fragility of males; it is f the fragility of the fucking constitution. If you can, f if you can force a Christian to bake a gay cake, why is it okay for a movie theater to discriminate based on gender? Well, because this is different. Males are fragile, and we have to take them down a peg. Even the gay ones. Uh, uh yes, yes, got to break a few eggs in it. Good thing, that makes sense. All right, fuck the Constitution. Let's fart on it and set it on fire because you need to push the weak around. It's hypocrisy at its finest. It's horse at its finest. But I'm telling you, these feminists are just female supremacists. If this is deemed okay, if we can have women-only screenings of Wonder Woman, then what's stopping us from having man-only screenings of movies? Shame. Shame. Shame is what stops you. It doesn't stop you because you don't fucking have any. And the smell. Shame and the smell. And the law! <laughs> and the fucking law is what's supposed to stop us from denying services to people based on their gender. Feminists once again broke the law and the constitution and they got away with it. 
And when men point out that you are breaking the law, all you have to say to them is, LOL, autistic screeching. I mean, LOL, male fragility. Sorry, I got, I got my memes mixed up. I keep forgetting <laughs> that they're not the same. Sorry, guys, they're totally not the same. Like, ah! Because men who believe in real equality in the real world know that women getting together to watch a movie about a goddess warrior doesn't pose a real threat. No, they just want to watch a fucking movie. And those gays just wanted a fucking cake. But some people religiously believe in the sanctity of heterosexual marriage. And some people religiously believe in gender segregation. It's up to us to figure out which of these problems is more pressing. Plus, our goddess armies aren't ready yet. <gasps> I've said too much. Again, I'm positive this is funny to someone. It's, just, it's fine, doesn't matter. And there are men-only screenings of films. It's called Entourage. I, I think that was a joke. I'm like 87% sure that was a joke, but can you see why I'm 13% unsure? I mean, you think the wage gap is legal discrimination orchestrated by the patriarchy. Maybe you also believe the Entourage audience is, is illegal discrimination orchestrated by the patriarchy. I have no idea what you actually believe, other than the obvious truth that the Wonder Woman audiences were clearly not illegal discrimination orchestrated by feminism. Such a thing would never happen. And if you think otherwise, then fuck you, you're a misogynist. Stop expressing your emotions. Your emotions are wrong. By the way, men need feminists because they help them to express their emotions. But the Alamo did apologize to the city of Austin after two men filed complaints. Even though, as one guy so bravely proved, theaters didn't actually prevent men from buying tickets to the all-female show. <laughs> they can buy tickets, yes. <laughs> Typical. No, we're more than happy to take your money, you're just not allowed the products. We don't prevent men from being fathers, they're more than welcome to give us their wages. They just figured you wouldn't want to be that guy mansplaining reverse sexism during the previews. Yeah, mansplaining! Lol, that's a good meme. I, I, that, and it's funny because it's true. Reverse sexism? Lol, that's a bad meme. It's impossible, so it's not funny. Ah, all in a day's work. I think I'm getting the hang of this now. <laughs> Sorry, that's the wrong meme. Oh, that's only funny to half of you. There we go. I think I've found the middle ground. I think I've found a meme that will please everyone. At least everyone who matters and is popular. I think I've found the group that we'd all be happy seeing, seeing an end put to. Am I right? The people we really wouldn't mind getting lost in a gas chamber one day. Because let's face it, they're troublemakers. They, they, they seem to have an unnerving talent for challenging authority and we can't have that. I mean, they, they refuse to accept the revealed wisdom that some memes are just plain good and some memes are just plain bad. And our memes are the good memes. They... they they, do, they, they don't always break their eggs at the big end or the little end. They approach things on an egg-by-egg egg basis. The monsters let us come together, warring tribes, to rid the world of the true heathens. I mean, I'm a man. <laughs> I'm a man, and I don't mind everything bad being named after my condition. Mansplaining, fine. Toxic masculinity, fine. Male fragility, it's fine. It's not as though the opposite of men ever do anything wrong, so let's name everything bad after men. I'm a man, so I get to say this. And I say these things because I am what we call a cuck. I will fuck myself over and my own kind because I'm so weak. That's what a cuck is, you see. Also, <laughs> I'm autistic, and I don't mind everything bad being named after my condition. Spurging, autistic screeching, and so on. It's all fine. It's not so the opposite of autism is even a thing. So let's name everything bad after autism. I say these things because I'm what we call a cuck. It's a certain kind of cuck. Cuck is a good meme, right? Is it? Oh, it's not? It's only a good meme when the good people use it against the bad people. Otherwise, it's a bad meme and only people with bad emotions would ever use it. Only you have the luxury of making those jokes! Okie dokie, now we're making progress. Dan, can I call you Dan? Next up is James Demore. What a fucking autist! Look at him! What a male autist, am I right? Useless, whining waste of space. What have people like that ever done for us? Get him the fuck out of our company and replace him with someone who will simply follow authority. I like this game. <laughs> Feminist or... Certain kind of cut. It's like Stormfag or SJW. <laughs> 
<laughs> Who said this? Feminist or certain kind of cuck? <laughs> let's, let's see. They blame everything on principally male conditions. They claim their level of caring is absolute when it clearly is selective. They don't like it when you talk smack about feminism. <laughs> Damn, child, I can't decide. Wow, this is clutch as fuck. You might have heard of Demore, a former Google engineer who was fired for internally circulating a memo that called Google's minority outreach and inclusion efforts discrimination. The fucking language police. James, James Demore was just spurking out and, and trying to language police those innocent techno wizards at Google. Man, life is so simple when you play your words right. We're not part of the problem. <laughs> Saying that those efforts were a waste on account of biological differences between men and women. Duh, there are no such differences. Everyone is autistic without exception, and no one is cluster B without exception. Don't you know anything? Yeah, that's him wearing a shirt that says Gulag. Because Google is exactly like a Soviet work camp, except for the nap pods, volleyball, free sushi, haircuts, and massages that none of you can have because you're not in the party. But other than that, it's pretty much Stalinism. Stalin did live in luxury with his cronies while the citizens of Russia starved and died all around him. You know that, don't you? You're familiar with that approach. <laughs> yeah, the only difference between you and him is Stalin put in a little bit more effort than you in at least pretending to give a shit about his workers. After he was fired, Demore denied arguing that women were less capable than men at being engineers. It was that you idiots reading his 3300 word memo complete with several citations that actually didn't cite anything didn't understand him. Dr. Random McCann denied telling everyone to stop saying things he doesn't like, but that's definitely what he said somewhere. No <laughs> one can remember where, but that's definitely what we remember. <laughs> and he needs to stop saying it because we don't like it. Even one of the researchers Demore cited wrote a response to the memo saying Demore misused his science. He said, quote, using someone's biological sex to essentialize an entire group of people's personality is like surgically operating with an ax. To which Demore said, Go on then, what did he say? Um, actually women are biologically incapable of using axes. I mean, why are men lumberjacks? <laughs> science. Well, Francesca said it. And Francesca's always right, you guys. Don't be a fucking spurg. Stop overthinking everything and just believe. But no matter, Demore, who says he may sue Google, has fittingly become a darling of the alt-right, which has both cheered him on and coddled him. What's it been like for you? I mean, is it, is it hard to sleep? Is it hard to concentrate? <laughs> this guy's in the alt-right because I say so. Life is easy. Life is so easy when you can just say shit. Yeah, it's definitely been hard to sleep. There was a surprising amount of attacks that were just at my race and gender. Yes. Having people classify you based on gender and race when you just want to live your life sucks. Women and people of color know exactly how that feels. Get it? You have fucking shit skin? Those are our feelings. <laughs> they belong to us. Only we can have those feelings. Except when we have them, they're not just feelings. They are literal truth and they are objectively funny. But when you describe the literal truth and the ascertainable and predictable medical differences between biological and psychological conditions. That's, you're not, you're not doing that. You're, those are just your feelings and you're wrong to feel them. Feeling them makes you the language patriarchy. <laughs> oh, oh, only when you tell the approved facts do you get access to the important feelings. Is that clear? I hope not, it only works when it's murky. And look, you've gotten job offers from other men in your male-dominated field that don't even know you, but just assume that you'd be qualified. <laughs> he was an engineer for Google. <laughs> That's a complete resume right there. What Google did by firing him and going hyper-public about it was essentially pin his resume onto every news feed in the world saying, James Damore, former Google engineer for hire. And he wasn't even fired for being a bad engineer. He was fired for being a free thinker. What do you think, everyone in the world? Any takers? Including one from Julian Assange. Because that's what happens when your only friends are Chinese takeout boxes. <laughs> oh, because your government wants him dead. That's, yeah, that's hilarious. And the last moment of male fragility you might have missed has to do with fragility about trans women having too many rights. Well, if transitioning from a man to a woman gives you more rights than you had before, then it's very fucking clear that women have more rights than men. When men notice that women have more rights than them, 
some of them go, hey, uh, maybe this needs equalising a little bit. And some of them go, fuck it, I'll just, I'll just become a woman. Personally, I fall into column A there. I just think if it's clear that women have more rights than men, the solution is not to give more rights to trans women. It's to give more rights to men. But I suppose now I'm just human rights policing. Going around imposing on people where I think they've gone wrong. I don't know, it's some kind of fascist or something. This one comes from Tucker Carlson, one of the remaining Fox hosts who hasn't faced sexual harassment charges. Fox hosts! That's, that's where you're leaving it, Fox hosts. You made this video on November the 3rd. Is there anyone else you can think of who's been embroiled in a touch of sexually themed controversy over the past few news cycles? Hollywood? Nah. Institutional kitty fiddling, any of that? Nah, this is the dude with the next Netflix show. <laughs> I, I don't even, no, I don't, I don't even what you want about. Surely you must mean someone on the other political wing from me. Although to be honest, his show is an unwanted assault on the senses. Savage. And he's shot. Back in April, Carlson had Caitlyn Jenner on his show and she talked about the murder rate of trans women. Men are killed for being women, yes. And women are not killed for being men, anything like as much. What does this tell us? Well, one way of interpreting it is that women are killed just for being women. And another way of interpreting it is that men are killed just for being women. Which of these is more likely to have been the case? For, like, centuries. She was concerned that Attorney General Jeff Sessions didn't care. Haven't you heard? Not caring is the new caring. There was a letter sent to him to uh, try to prosecute the murderers of these trans women as hate crimes, and he never even responded, which is extremely disappointing to me. Remind me where, where the male fragility is in this story, honey? A few months later, the Department of Justice did say it would prosecute trans murders as hate crimes, but that didn't stop Carlson from getting fragile over trans women having the privilege of being a hate crime victim. Uh, that, oh god, that is a privilege. Francesca, very much so. It's very important that you understand this. If a man kills a woman, he can get a death sentence. Either in the court from the judge, or in prison from the prisoners, or when he gets out from the public. If a man kills a fly, he gets no sentence at all. Do you see how women have more legal privileges than flies there? And more privileges than men? If, if a woman kills a man, she gets, uh oh, spaghettios, must be the hormones, temporary insanity, state of shock, he was abusing her, acquit. This is, this is actual inequality, discrimination against men in the eyes of the law. And I understand that one possible approach to this inequality is to incentivize men to simply become women and then everyone will be equal. I mean, it worked for Caitlyn, it can work for anyone, surely. Don't call me surely. But I'm just saying, maybe another way we could go at this is to make the rights equal. It might be easier than making the bodies equal. I wonder if it's not just enough to prosecute someone for murder. Hello from the future. It's 2017 and Tucker Carlson is the only one on TV making any sense. Enjoy your meals. Put yourself in the position of someone else. If, if someone you loved were killed and the murderer received a lesser sentence because your loved one was not a member of the trans community, you'd say, well, that's kind of unfair. I mean, we're all Americans. Excuse me, what? Tucker Carlson is all lives mattering death. I wasn't aware that all lives matter had become a verb. But if so, then to whom or what does one do it, if not to death? Like, all lives matter when it comes to death. Yes, I think that might in fact be the case. It's not just true, it's not just trivially true, it's so trivially true that it would be a waste of my time to even consider it. Yet here it is on my desk! Which coincidentally is death's favourite game. Death's favourite game is chess, everyone knows that. I suggest you learn it. So, movie buffs, James Damore, Tucker resting dumb face Carlson. Big old jealousy boner for Monday Matt right now. Look at that, eh? <laughs> oh, man. Those are, those are the kind of snapshots you want to write home about. It's what keeps us going.
Don't worry, men still have it good. You make up 85% of the tech jobs at the largest tech companies. No, I don't. I'm homeless. To roughly the same ratio. You still have 70% of speaking roles in films. No, I don't. I'm suicidal. To roughly the same ratio. And no one is saying some murder is worse than yours. Your homework for today, Francesca, is write me an essay entitled What is Femicide? How does it differ from homicide and in what countries and regions has it already been adopted? Unless anyone messes with Laverne Cox, then everyone's going to jail! What if I told you that I have access to a black female transgendered celebrity in a wheelchair? I know, meet me by the gas station, this is good shit! Just let women have some things. You can have my dick. <laughs> Wait, that is basically what you're driving at, isn't it? Uh, maybe Freud was right about something. Consider it our way of coping. With what? Borderline personality disorder? With you. Oh. Well, you fuck off then. Love you. Yeah, I thought so.